Hey guys, in this series of videos, we are going to have a look at how we can create our own data set for sentiment analysis. Then we are going to use this data set uh, to create a sentiment analysis model. And this model is going to be using the BERT transformer pre-trained model from Hugging Face. And we're going to do all of that using PyTorch. Before I start, I want to say that uh, all of my books are now currently free, so you can go ahead and grab your copies uh, on Limpop. And this uh, will, will stay, I mean, like the books will be free at least until the pandemic is over. So you might want to do something with that and get some books for yourself. Uh, today, I'm going to start with the first step or the first part of these videos and we are going to get some Google Play reviews. So the Google Play is this website that is containing all of those, let's say, apps for Android. And if I go at the App Store and let me zoom in. Uh, this is the web page at least, so here you have a lot of apps, games, and they contain screenshots, icons, and everything in between. But the most important part is that uh, this web page contains uh, app reviews, and those app reviews has a score between uh, 1 and 5 stars, and they contain, they might also contain a uh, full length review. Uh, another thing that you see here is actually the date at which the review was left and how many of the other users think that this review is actually helpful. Uh, so you can mark it as unhelpful, spam or get a link to this review. All right. Um, I'm going to basically take all of the reviews using a scraping library and this scraping library is going to be, uh, in our case at least, the Google Play Scraper available on GitHub, which is uh, basically inspired by the uh, same, the, the, the name of the library which is actually the same uh, from Node.js. So, if you want to have a look at the Node.js implementation, here it is, I guess. Yeah, uh, this is much more uh, popular library, but that uh, doesn't matter actually in our case because the Python implementation will work great uh, for our use case. So, let me go ahead and start a Google Co-op Notebook here. And I'm going to... Uh, start with installing the Google Play Scraper and I'm going to uh, kill the verbosity basically. Uh, next, after all of this is done, I'm going to copy and paste uh, some of the imports that we are going to need. So I'm basically importing JSON because the Google Play library is actually returning uh, lists of JSONs. I'm importing Seaborn, Matplotlib uh, because we will do some, just a tiny bit of plotting. And uh, I'm going to have a look at the JSON format. So I'm uh, using pigments to basically code highlight some of the parts of the results and of course I'm importing the Google Play Scraper. We are going to have a look at the reviews endpoint, the app endpoint and we are basically going to take the reviews according to a sort order that we are interested in. All right, next I'm basically inwinding the Matplotlib, pretty standard stuff using Seaborn and scaling the font. Okay, so let me execute this and you have a warning from Pandas and currently the Google Co-op is actually using Pandas 1.03 I believe which is great uh, because it is much more recent version of Pandas compared to the old uh, installation. All right, so how do we create our dataset? Uh, of course, you can basically go to the Google Play 
web page, go to the home and uh, there are a lot of apps that are probably recommended or something like that. But if you take just a bunch of random apps, you're going to end up with uh, data or information about different domains of uh, users and target audiences and these audiences might use uh, domain specific words, keywords for some of their reviews and basically you might get such a, you might need such a large data set to get all of the information from all of the domain specific words and this might be a pretty tough task. Uh, I mean, like you might want to have to, let's say, scrape uh, one million apps or more. And for those million apps, you might want to take like, let's say, 1000 reviews for each, which will be a rather large data set. Uh, but we are going to do something much more simpler. We are going to basically target a simple category, a single category, and I'm going to choose uh, the productivity category. And of course, uh, this is a rather popular one and contains a lot of apps uh, from uh, with diverse uh, target audiences. You have goal trackers, you have uh, antiviruses, you have uh, document readers, Microsoft Word, etc., book, PDF readers, etc., etc. But I'm going to specifically target the productivity apps, which are known as to do apps and calendar apps and planning apps. Uh, and I'm going to do that mostly because I have uh, a lot of actually background in creating uh, to do applications. And let's say that I'm a bit familiar with the domain specific uh, stuff around to do apps. Okay, so how we are going to choose the particular apps, I'm going to use a website called AppAni. And this is the page. And you can basically register for free in here. Not that you're going to need it because I'm going to share with you the data set that we are using. Um, here I'm going to top charts, Google Play, I'm selecting United States, productivity, and then you have uh, basically a leaderboard of all of the apps that are used for, uh, that are presented into the Google Play in United States. And from here, I've basically went ahead and chosen some of the apps. I've picked probably Habit Tracker, uh, AnyDoos Calendar app, uh, Todoist, of course, uh, let's say something else that I've picked. Uh, I'm also in excluding Google apps, mostly because those are pre-installed on the Android devices and they have rather, let's say, their installation numbers and user base in general is rather contrived number because, well, they're pre-installed pre -installed on the devices and, well, I'm not really trusting that they're that much better compared to the third-party apps. So, uh, some of the apps here, the Habit Tracker, you can go ahead here and take a look at the screenshots. Uh, you have initial release date. Uh, okay, 2014. You have the calendar app from the AnyDo team, etc. etc. You have a lot of apps actually here. And alright, so this is the app Ani. Okay, so the Google Play Scraper actually needs the app package and if we go ahead and open a single app you are going to notice that when you open this it has an ID which is basically the, the Java package for this application which is the unique identifier of your app. Okay, so uh, we are basically going to take a bunch of these for all of the apps 
that I've uh, already chosen and we are going to use that and the end point of up like presented here and I'm going to basically take the information about those apps. So how are we going to do that? First, I'm going to create a list of all the packages that we want to take. So I'm going to start with any do, then to do list. Then I'm going to take a look at tick, tick, Habit RPG, which is one of my favorite actually. The forest focused up, which is another great one. Habit Bull, which I believe was bought by a third party company. Life RPG tasks have it now. Uh, Microsoft has a great to do app to do. Uh, Time Tune is another very good one. Next is the Artful Agenda, which I'm not familiar with. The Business Calendar. And the Planner app. Alright, so... Uh, in ideal world, I would love to get all of the to-do apps and get all of their reviews. But here we are dealing with the real world, basically. So I'm going to just take uh, some of the apps that are well known. They have enough reviews there. They've been around for some time and they have proven that um, a lot of users are actually using them and they've proven that they're not some spammers or people that are basically trying to steal uh, personal data using the apps and these guys are uh, have presented some products that uh, provide value to the end user so this is how basically i am filtering the apps that we are going to need and those are going to be basically just 15 apps all right, so next I'm going to use the Google Play Scraper package to get all of the app information. I'm going to iterate over each package. And use the app endpoint, provide the package or the app ID. I want English, the English version, and I'm going to take the description for the US. Of course, you might be interested in multilingual uh, reviews or app informations. Currently, I'm not uh, interested in that one. And this endpoint actually contains some of the comments that are or reviews that are associated with the app. And I'm going to basically take those into the next method that we're going to, uh, into the next step that we're going to do. So for now, I'm going to remove these. And I'm going to append the result. Okay, app not found. So I might have made the mistake in the list actually let me go ahead and check this and it looks like it did so 9 of, of 15 
1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Com Microsoft to do's. Com habit now. Prox swap. Calc. Calc walk. <laughs> yeah, I made a mistake. <laughs> All right, let me do this again. Okay, so all of the app informations are now here and I want to have a look basically at what we have so far. So I'm going to write a little function that is basically going to help us uh, present the JSON response uh, from the app info or, or the reviews into a JSON format. And it will accept just the JSON object. I'm going to extract the string using the JSON dumps method. I would like to get an indentation of two tabs. I want the keys to be sorted so we have a consistent result. And I would like the default mapper of the values to be just a string. So every every value will be uh, that the JSON dumps method can't uh, basically convert is going to be using the string representation of the value. So this will be useful when we have uh, the, let me show you. This will be very useful when we have the date at which the review was set because the Google Play Scribe Scraper library is basically returning a daytime object so we want to convert this daytime object into a string which uh, we are going to show. So just like that we will fix this problem. Okay so now that we, that we have the JSON string I am basically going to print the highlighted result using the pigment, uh, pigments highlighting library and this will require a lexer which is going to be the JSON lexer because we are printing just the JSON and we are going to use the terminal formatter so that the results are actually covered. Alright so I am going to use the function print JSON and I am going to print the info of the first library and you can see that we have a rather nice response which is uh, well it contains mostly blue and yellow uh, but you can see that some of the values here are numbers and they are nicely highlighted so the information that we have basically here is the app ID which is again the package name of the app. We have some description, we have the developer, uh, some developer ID, we have the site of the app, we have the category, we have uh, most importantly we have all of the uh, ratings for this app and I'm going to show you what this means. Let me go to the any do. So if you go to the bottom you can see this are is this is the distribution of the ratings and we have uh, this number of ratings so if I go ahead and check the reviews uh, of course the ratings is the, this exact same numbers and th this exact same number but the number of reviews is actually lower because you can basically put a score without leaving a review uh, but yeah, so this is that and the histogram is actually, these are the number of the 5 stars, 4 stars, 3 stars, 2, 1 stars and you can clearly see this is matching uh, roughly this one. So we have all of this information stored into a JSON format and we have the screenshots and uh, basically the title of the app and the summary of the app the size, the link to the video, oh, we also have uh, the icon of the app 
which is in this link right here. So to get a quick summary of the apps that we've taken, I'm going to basically create some subplots and show you all of the icons of the apps so we get a better feel at, of what we are dealing with. And I'm going to create some subplots using matplotlib. It's going to contain two rows. And those rows are going to contain uh, basically half of the amount of icons that we have. And this is 15 in our, in our case. I'm going to specify the figure size, which is going to be, let's say, uh, 10 by 3. Let's start with that. And for each axis, I'm going to take the flatten version of the axis, not the 2D version. I'm going to take the app info. I'm going to read the image and this uh, matplotlib method in read will basically go ahead and read the icon from the URL that we are providing. So this is pretty cool. I'm going to show the image. I'm going to also set a title. And I'm going to basically cut the title to, uh, up to 10 characters because otherwise it's going to be very large. And I'm going to turn off the axis here. And after some time, uh, you can basically see all of the apps that we are dealing with. The AnyDo to do East, we have the Microsoft to do, Habitica, TickTick, Forest, all those uh, amazing productivity apps. I have just a little bit of uh, pickle with this. You can see that we have the double dots here. Well, this is not properly formatted, what I'm going to, uh, what is it I'm saying. So I'm going to write a simple function called format title. And it's going to accept a title. And you can see that most of the time the separators between the titles are just dash or um, those two dots. I forgot their name. So I'm going to look for those. If the title contains this. And to it, uh, find who return the index or the position of this character. Otherwise, it's going to return minus one. Or I'm going to look for the dash. So if I found the index, I'm going to basically strip the other characters. So I'm going to put, uh, sorry, I'm going to cut the length of the title. And in general, I don't want the title to be more than 10 characters. No matter if I found the separator or not. So I'm going to call this function here. All right. And now we have uh, rather very good titles. Of course, some examples like business calendar are not that great, but most of the apps uh, with their titles look rather good. So I'm going to increase this. Yeah, this is great. So these are the apps that we are looking at. And here, uh, yeah. So I think we're missing one up actually. Yeah, whatever, you get, you get the picture. This is the picture. All right, so um, 
Next, I'm going to basically get the app infos and convert them into a pandas data frame. Uh, luckily for us, this will be very good because the data frame uh, constructor actually can take a list of JSON files and create a data frame for that. So this should basically do it. Yeah, so this is uh, the date frame. It contains all of the information that you need. I'm going to just print the first, let's say, two examples. And you have the title, the description, the styles, the score, the ratings and everything. Okay, so this is looking very good. Next, I'm going to basically go ahead and save this to a CSV file and I'm going to name it apps.csv. I don't want to save the index and I want to save the header. And if you open up this one, you can see that we have the apps stored in here. And this is uh, the preview from the Google Pool app. And it looks like uh, everything is probably here. So you can go ahead and download this file. And yeah, I've already done this. Okay, so next, uh, that we now that we have the app info, which we are basically not that much interested in, but still we might use this uh, later on when we are doing our analysis. Uh, basically, uh, you might want to have more data uh, than less, so we are basically going ahead and saving everything that we have, uh, everything that we can about the apps that we are analyzing. And next, I'm going to uh, get the app reviews. So I'm basically going to do roughly the same steps. And I'm going to iterate over each package. But I would like to take uh, the reviews for basically different, let me go ahead and show you. If I go here and say uh, read all reviews, this adds another get parameter at the top, which is show all reviews, which is the endpoint that basically the scraper is looking at. And here you can see that we, you can sort the reviews with newest rating and most relevant. Uh, another thing that you can do is that you can basically filter out the star ratings for each review. And most of the most of the data sets that are found on the internet containing reviews are basically heavily imbalanced because most of the reviews for most of the apps or most of the products are basically five or four stars. So this is pretty much a tough case for any sentiment an analyzer that you might have. So we can mitigate this issue by basically using this filter and uh, downloading a bunch of one star, two star, three star, four star and five star reviews. And we can basically balance their counts, which is great. Okay, so for each app package, I want to get, get some reviews for each uh, review score. And this review score can be anything in the one to five range. Of course, the range uh, is not including the end value. And I just want to take the most relevant reviews and the newest reviews for each score uh, because, yeah, the reviews are uh, put out during some different times. And I 
basically want to take the newest ones uh, because they probably will take us the most uh, basically they will tell us the most about the app at the current state and the most relevant ones are going to be based on the the whole history of the app if you will so this will tell us well yeah this app is actually very liked by the users or very disliked or this app is generally lacking this feature or another feature so this will be very good if you're analyzing the apps themselves and we are going to use the sort order of most relevant once again and newest okay so the reviews are going to use the reviews endpoint I'm going to put in the package the language the country which is going to be once again US the sort order and the count is going to be 200 if the score is 3 or 100 otherwise why we're doing this well when we are basically analyzing the sentiment of the reviews we are going to co convert the score into three categories uh, ratings or reviews with a rating or score of one and two will be let's say negative sentiment the neutral sentiment is going to be the reviews that are using uh, that are having three as a score and everything else will be set to a positive sentiment so basically we are going to create imbalance if we take only uh, 100 reviews for each score and we are basically using uh, this if statement here to mitigate this issue and we are going to take just the reviews with score that is passed in from the top of the for loop so for each review I'm going to store the sort order that we are using currently and this will be most relevant if the sort order is sort most relevant otherwise it's going to be used and I'm going to store the app package into an app ID here and finally I'm going to extend the reviews with the list that we've obtained so let me run this uh, if oh, alright if sort order the reviews are downloaded now and this took about a minute uh, at least on this machine and I'm going to print a sample review And yeah, we have a review for the AnyDo app. We have the time at which the review was set. So this is using the uh, default string converter that we've passed in. We have the content, which is basically the review. We might have a reply from the developer, which is basically optional. We have the time at which the reply was sent. Okay so this looks good we have the sort order we have the score which is one for this and how much other users are agreeing or how helpful this is we have user image and user name so basically all of this is stored into those reviews i'm going to go ahead again and convert the JSONs into a pandas data frame And I'm going to first start with the shape of this. Whoa, we have almost 16k reviews, so this is very good. Uh, and I'm going to again take a look at this. So it looks like, yeah, 
we have the username, the user image, the content, the score, thumbs up count, and pretty much all of the good stuff that we need. And most importantly, we have the app ID. Uh, so we can basically later on link the information of the review with the, uh, with the app itself. So this is very good. And I'm going to go ahead and store again the re reviews data frame into a CSV file. And I'm going to name this reviews.csv, remove the index and store the header. All right, so this should be here, which should be a much larger file. Yeah, almost seven megabytes compared to this, which is 131K. Okay, so you can go ahead and download this if you want to. Yeah. Uh, okay, so this is pretty much the data set that we are going to use into the next uh, into the next part, and with this one we are going to use the bird model from the Hugging Face implementation, and we are going to use the pre-trained one, of course, to basically create a sentiment analyzer using uh, the app reviews from the Google Play apps. And thanks for watching, guys. Please like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next part. Bye-bye.